The year was 1995. The massively popular animated sitcom The Simpsons was nearing the end of its sixth season. And after years of delighting fans with the antics of the titular family and the colorful characters who made the town of Springfield feel like home, it was preparing to end with a massive bang that would shake the world and be the most talked about subject that entire summer, with millions of people across the planet all asking themselves the same question. Who shot Mr. Burns? Based on an idea from series creator Matt Groening, who wanted to do an episode where Mr. Burns was shot, and written by writing duo Bill Oakley and Josh Weinstein, it was decided that the episode would be written in two parts, with a whodunit mystery that could be used in a contest. The episode itself took inspiration from the season 3 finale of the popular TV series Dallas, in the episode A House Divided, which is more commonly known today as Who Shot J.R., after a series of greedy and immoral dealings, the episode ended with the egocentric oil baron J.R. Ewing being shot dead in his office by an unknown assailant. Oakley and Weinstein took great care in planning to design a mystery that had clues, moments you'd have to pause the episode to see, and center the whole thing around one character who had seemed to be the clear and obvious suspect. Waylon Smithers. Or was it Homer Simpson? Obviously, all these years later, we know that the real culprit was none other than little Maggie Simpson. But at the time, it was such a closely guarded secret, with only a few select Simpson staff members, including Oakley and Weinstein and animator David Silverman, knowing the truth. While deciding who the culprit was, Oakley and Weinstein wanted Barney Gumble because they figured he was a character that could go to jail for a few years and thus could change the dynamic of the show. However, season showrunner David Merkin suggested the shooter should be Maggie because he thought it was funnier and felt that the culprit should be a member of the family instead. And we were instantly talking about who was going to be the one that did it. And I suggested Maggie. Because we originally, I think, I think we said, we wanted it to be Barney. We wanted Barney and we said Barney's going to go to prison and he's going to go away for years and they'll never see him again. <laughs> and somebody wisely said maybe it should be a member of the family. As mentioned earlier, meticulous planning was taken to ensure every clue was correct so that the mystery could actually be solved with just the first episode. Reasonably, of course. Definitely not easily. Which is why, before we move on, I want to do a quick rundown of Mr. Burns' shady dealings in this episode and go over the clues that the writers and animators put in place to help viewers solve the mystery, as well as debunk a few of the most common suspects as we get to the Maggie conclusion. After groundskeeper Willie strikes oil while attempting to bury the school's fourth grade gerbil super dude, Mr. Burns decides to take the oil by erecting a slant drilling operation and taps the oil well for himself. This causes chaos and damage all over town. The oil smashes into Bart's treehouse, wrecking it and injuring himself and breaking Santa's little helper's legs. The drilling then causes a sinkhole in the ground underneath the Springfield Retirement Castle leaving Abe Simpson and the rest of the old folks of Springfield homeless. So Abe moves back in with the Simpsons, with one of the few possessions he brings with him being a loaded Smith & Wesson. The fumes from the drilling also cause Moe to shut down his bar until the operation has ceased, leaving Barney and the two barflies Larry and Sam, yes, they have names, with nowhere to go. Upon leaving the tavern, Moe grabs a shotgun from under the bar. And with the school now bankrupt, groundskeeper Willie, music teacher Dewey Largo, and the new jazz teacher Tito Puente are all laid off. It's at this point that Willie vows revenge on Mr. Burns. Meanwhile, Mr. Burns reveals to Smithers his grand plan. Permanently block out the sun with the use of a giant disc. Smithers tells Mr. Burns he has gone too far and is promptly fired for doing so. A town meeting is then held to discuss what to do about Mr. Burns' actions. Burns then shows up armed with a gun. After the meeting, Mr. Burns walks into an alley where he struggles with an unknown character and a gunshot is heard. The episode then ends with Mr. Burns falling on the sundial in the town square. So what clues do we have here? Well, for starters, the most obvious one, Mr. Burns recognizes his shooter. 
This immediately rules out Homer as the shooter as throughout the entire episode, Mr. Burns cannot remember his name. Smithers states that he never misses an episode of Party My Zinger. In early in the episode at Moe's, we can clearly see on the TV that Party My Zinger airs at 3 o'clock, which is the same time the shooting takes place. As Mr. Burns is leaving the town meeting, Smithers is seen headed in the opposite direction. So that eliminates Smithers. When everyone is seen stroking their guns at the town meeting, Moe is shown with his shotgun, which would obviously do much more damage to Mr. Burns. Also during that same shot, Principal Skinner is shown to have a suppressor on his gun, but we clearly hear a gunshot. This eliminates Moe and Principal Skinner. Probably the biggest hint towards Maggie is the fact that early on in the episode, Mr. Burns makes a comment about stealing candy from a baby. Another fact that leads credence to Maggie being the shooter is the fact that Mr. Burns struggles with his assailant, meaning they would either have to be old and weak like he is, or be a toddler or a baby. And finally, when Mr. Burns collapses on the sundial, his arms land on the W and the S, indicating towards a possible name of the shooter. Or, if you look at it at a different angle, M and S. Additionally, when Mr. Burns collapses, his holster is clearly empty, implying that he has been shot with his own gun. And so, with all the pieces in place, the episode, officially titled Who Shot Mr. Burns Part 1, aired on May 21st, 1995. Next Sunday, Mr. Burns is shot. And everyone's a suspect. Oh. See if you can solve the mystery nah. people will be talking about all summer long. This isn't Mr. Burns at all. It's a mask. Wait, it is Burns. His wrinkly skin look, looks like a mask. Don't miss the Simpsons season finale next Sunday on Fox. As mentioned earlier, the writers wanted the episode to be used in a contest. And so, an absolutely foolproof contest was designed. From August 13th to September 10th, 1995, viewers could dial 1-800-COLLECT, where they would then guess who they thought the culprit was. The prize for the contest would be a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to be animated into an episode of The Simpsons. There was also a website at the time, www.springfield.com, that provided fans with clues. It was one of the first attempts by a TV show to have online interactivity with fans, and it received more than 500,000 hits. Mr. Burns is shot. Woohoo! Everyone's a suspect. Oh! The Great Simpsons mystery has begun, and you can solve it. Watch Fox this summer to find out how you can win a chance to be animated and appear with The Simpsons. Look for The Simpsons Mystery Sweepstakes Who Shot Mr. Burns coming this summer from Fox. And 1-800-COLLECT, the way to save on collect calls. As part of the contest and episode debuts, various promotional items were distributed by Fox, though I'm not entirely sure how one would have acquired these items. The items included a beach towel, a mouse pad, various posters, a dartboard with a picture of Mr. Burns on it complete with a dart gun, and other miscellaneous items. 7-Eleven also had a tie-in with the episode, with cups advertising the contest and instructing buyers to call the 1-800-COLLECT number. Around this time, the Mirage Casino in Las Vegas was also taking bets on who would end up being the shooter, with Homer in the lead, with Smithers followed closely behind and at number two. The odds against you winning are a thousand to one. Well, I don't think it's that unlikely. Those are the odds they're given in Vegas. All right, I think we've heard just about enough from Mr. Newspaper today. After a whole summer of speculation and guessing, the time had finally come to find out the true answer to the question that had plagued the entertainment world for months. But right before the second part to this mystery aired on September 17th, 1995, we were thrown into a manhunt for the culprit ourselves, with the airing of the half-hour special Springfield's Most Wanted. In Miami, in a state-of-the-art, high-tech, undercover police helicopter. We've spared no expense in trying to track down a dangerous fugitive who's been on the run since last season. A viewer tip led us to this location, where 
some say the gunman wanted in the shooting of Mr. Montgomery Burns is on his way to Cuba. Join us as we attempt to solve the crime of the century. I'm John Walsh, and this is Springfield's Most Wanted. A parody of America's Most Wanted, Springfield's Most Wanted featured host John Walsh discussing the shooting of Mr. Burns by laying out all the clues and suspects for the audience. It also featured appearances and predictions from former Los Angeles Police Chief Daryl Gates, Las Vegas bookmaker Jimmy Vicard, psychiatrist Lydia Hansen, and actor Dennis Franz. After the special, Who Shot Mr. Burns Part 2 finally aired, and people all around the world got the answer to the question that they had been asking all summer long. Maggie Simpson was the shooter. After Mr. Burns attempted to take her lollipop from her, a struggle ensued, ending in his gun falling into Maggie's lap, and with the safety seemingly off, the gun fired automatically. The gun fell beneath the seat of the Simpson's car, and Burns stumbled over to the sundial, and his arms fell facing the M and the S. And that was that. Maggie was the shooter, and no real dynamic change ever occurred in the show. But who was the winner of the contest? What lucky fan got to be animated into an episode? Well, that's a bit more complex. In terms of who won the grand prize of being animated into an episode, nobody. Not a single person was ever animated into the show. But why? The way the contest worked is that the entries were taken from a sampling of a thousand people. And out of those thousand people, not a single one of them guessed the correct assailant. But there had to be a winner. So they give me that sampling of a thousand, which involved people call, calling the 1-800. There was no winner. And I said, okay, we got to do another sample of another 1,000. And they said no. They said the way the contest <laughs> rules are is that you must find a winner within the first thousand people. I said, well, there is no winner. With it. And they said, find one. And I said, no, this is completely unfair. So, uh, because by the way, the, the, the gift, the winning person got to be animated on an episode. Okay, by, by the way, you remember we had a big meeting with Fox about uh, what, what the prize should be. And you said, a million dollars! <laughs> <laughs> you never heard such silence. <laughs> it was just, you know, you, they, they just shrunk into the It should have been a million dollars. That, that would have been great. Yeah. Yeah. And people would have paid attention. So anyway, they're forcing me now because it was in the contract in this fine print that I had to pick someone. I never would have agreed to it had they shown me the fine print. They didn't show me to that point. So I was furious. We had to pick somebody who picked Smithers. So the winner of the Who Shot Mr. Burns contest was wrong. <laughs> That's who the winner was. It was randomly chosen, or I chose in the thousand person. Uh, uh, it was a woman, an old older lady, an older lady <laughs> from Washington D.C. who had picked Smithers, and we didn't want to animate her because it would ca cause more. But she didn't opt to be animated. Well, right? we sort wait, of. Wait, wait, wait. So the woman was. Tr did you speak to the woman? No, I never spoke to the woman. The idea was we sent a couple of goons <laughs> <laughs> to threaten her to keep quiet. No, it, it was sort of we gave her money instead. And uh, I think we wound up giving her over $4 million. <laughs> she, no, no, it was, that's not true either. I'm sorry to mix the story. We, we gave her a, a nice sum to keep quiet. <laughs> and she dis and disappeared. And she disappeared. You know, uh, her home was bulldozed the following weekend. And. No one can find her now, but that's He's the answer. The, the winner was a loser. The winner was, was wrong, and we were forced to pick him, and the, the contest was a shambles. We never, <laughs> ever <laughs> animated anybody in the show, and luckily no one asked us to, about it. And so the wrong person won. Fela Gibson of Washington, D.C. was chosen as the winner. However, not being a Simpsons fan, she instead opted for cash as a prize. But... Surely someone out there correctly guessed Maggie. Well, as a matter of fact, someone did. The night of the first episode's airing. But for legal reasons, this person could not win. That remember, and I think I said this on the other comment, that only one person on the internet guessed it. One. 
One person got it right the night of the show, figured it out, had this the right reason. This was back reasons. when only 11 people were using the internet. <laughs> that's, that's true, but he was smart, and we and I and I couldn't contact him because that was illegal for our contest because he just postulated on the internet. I was going to contact him later. He was at a college, and then when we tried to go back and find him, we tried even again when we were doing this commentary. His his college internet address was gone, and we were never able to. <laughs> track him down back then and we couldn't track him down now either so there's this unknown person in america who did guess maggie john was, smith give us a call give us a call there's one hundred money in it for you <laughs> no, i'm sure not, if you do a search on, <laughs> on on google groups for the date for the night that this thing aired which was september 17th 1995 you'll find it maybe that guy will find it and contact us in some way i think he i think he he figured out at the end of the first episode oh right 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 so that yeah. was like may something yeah whatever well we tried that it was it was a mess and there you have it, guys. After all that time and effort to put together this contest, and nobody really won it. As was previously mentioned, nobody was ever animated into an episode. And the person who guessed Maggie on that fateful night all those years ago was never found. It just goes to show, with contests and stuff like this, you can never tell what'll happen. I hope you all enjoyed the video. I thought this would be a fun topic to cover. And who knows, maybe I'll do some more stuff like this in the future. I hope you guys have a great night. I'm Seeker of the Lost, and I'll see you guys in the next video.